Hello, and welcome to the 2020 McAllen Church of Christ Voter Information Session. My name is Maggie Bell, and I want to thank you for joining us today. So the purpose of this session is to provide you with information regarding the upcoming November election. We want you to walk into the voter booth and feel empowered and knowledgeable about the candidates and issues that are on your ballot. So the information that we're going to be providing today includes early voting dates, early voting sites, absentee voting, local and national candidates, and much more. So our featured speaker and presenter will be Nicole Hart, first vice chair of the Democratic Party of Arkansas. So after her presentation, we will allow viewers to ask questions. So we are asking that if you have a question, to place it in the chat box. And then when we open the floor for questions, I will read the question from the chat box to Nicole and she will answer it. And we actually have a special treat today. Following Nicole, we're gonna have a guest speaker and the person of Deborah Mitchell. So Ms. Mitchell serves as Chief of Staff in the Pulaski County Circuit and County Clerk Office. And she will provide us with encouraging words and motivate us in this upcoming election. Okay, and so now I'm gonna read Nicole's, Nicole S. Hart's biography. So Nicole Hart has always had a heart for service, even adopting the tagline, always in service. We found her first as a servant leader in our youth ministry here at McAlman Church of Christ, working to grow the youth of today with a focus on faith and family by showing kindness and love, one of our congregation's mottos. She attended two well-known Christian institutions where she learned the importance of faith and family. She attended Southwestern Christian College and earned her associate's degree of science. She went on to continue her studies at Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas, where she studied political science, as well as enlisted in the Arkansas Army National Guard. She came to Arkansas to attend college, but her heart became a heart, H-A-R-T, in 2008 when she married her long-term, long-time boyfriend, Patrick, and Arkansas became her home. In 2004, Nicole was deployed to Iraq with the 39th Infantry Brigade and was a member of Headquarters Company Support Battalion, which lost the most sol soldiers in a single tour for the Arkansas National Guard during the Operation Iraqi Freedom War. Upon her return home from the life-changing experiences in Iraq in 2005, she not only completed her degree work at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, she also joined the Mike Beebe for Governor campaign, helping with what would become his successful bid for election. When Governor Beebe took office in 2007, Nicole was tapped as his military and veterans affairs advisor. She also represented the office of the governor on the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force and had oversight of more than 30 boards as a special liaison. In 2011, Nicole established RVETS, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to enhance the overall quality of life for veterans and their families by improving access to resources and strengthening support systems through all phases of the military life cycle. She serves as its CEO until July of 2007. Since then, her primary role has been wife to Patrick Hart and mother to their children. Together, they share four children. She likes to say two by birth and two by blessing. They have their eldest son, Alan Hart, who resides in Memphis. The eldest daughter, Ariana Hart, who is a freshman at UAPB. At home with them is Paige Hart, a fourth grader at Scott Charter School, and Patrick Jr., who they lovingly call PJ, who is in pre-K at Little Treasures in Sherwood. She currently serves as CEO of her and her husband's consulting firm, Heartwork Strategies, LLC, and is vice chair for the Democratic Party of Arkansas. In addition to those roles, she sits on the board of directors for Rock Region Metro, where she serves as an officer for the board. She serves on the executive committee for mental health queries and chairs its stakeholders council, spearheading, po spearheading policy development for research and implementation for veterans behavioral health programs within the United States Department of Veteran Affairs. One of Nicole's faith service roles is she serves on the board for City Connections, a local nonprofit that focuses on connecting servant-driven efforts within the faith-based community with servant-driven efforts in the nonprofit community. Because of her work and influence, Nicole has received numerous recognition and honors. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicole Hart. Thank you so much, Maggie. Um, you didn't shorten it. <laughs> But thank you for that. Um, welcome, everybody. So um, it's such an honor to be here today. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, do a couple of things. Uh, Maggie, you need to switch the view because I think they can only see you. <laughs> oh, they can? Okay. Um, 
Today, we're so excited to have you here. I'm going to do a couple of things because um, we talked about ways that we wanted to make sure everybody was informed. So one of the things is I'm, I'm going to show you how to look up your ballot first, because I think that's important for everybody to do. So at this time, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to pull up, it's so hard to do this, a website for you guys that if this thing don't move out the way. Okay, so when you go to your Pulaski County Clerk's office, um, can you, Maggie, can you see that? Let me pull y'all up so I can make sure y'all can see what I'm seeing. Maggie, can you see the screen? Okay, great. Okay, so when you pull up your Pulaski County Clerk's website, You're going to click on it and if you see here you'll be able to go to this website down here to the bottom left you're going to check your voter registration status and polling location it'll pull up a, a thing for you now i'm going to go ahead and input my information because most of you know how old i am so i'm not <laughs> ashamed so you put in your information And if you notice, once you do that, it's going to pull up your information relative to uh, where you vote. It's going to have your voting centers. So this is where um, my voting centers are. And it's going to show you early voting date. For those of you guys that want to check your early voting dates, here are the early voting sites here on the left. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to be able to pull up your ballot. If you click on this, it's going to give you a sample ballot. So you'll be able to see before you go into the poll what your ballot looks like. So it's going to show you who's on there. Um, so a lot of times people go in there and sometimes they get thrown off when they don't know what's on their ballot. So this gives you an opportunity to actually see. So in my district, I have the presidential um, candidates. I have uh, the U.S. Senate uh, Congress because I live in the second district. So if we have someone on the call who doesn't live in the second district, you might see somebody from the third district or the fourth fourth district, depending on where you live. Your state representative is also going to be representative of where you live. So it'll have the candidates on there. And it'll also have the issues on there, which is a lot of times our voters get confused because they're unprepared um, for the issue. And after my presentation, I'll go over from a nonpartisan perspective um, what those issues are and, and how you can examine those issues and determine if you're for or against them. So this is uh, how you would be able to check um, your ballot, look up your information, making sure that you're registered to vote, making sure that you have um, the proper information. Um, and so it's something that has been very helpful for. Okay, so now we're going to go through our presentation. It's a little bit harder for me to pull up my speaker view. But so this information was pulled from um, the Pulaski County Clerk's Office, Arkansas uh, Election Commission, and then of course some of the information is um, that we can find on our Arkansas Secretary of State's office. Um, one of the things that we're working to do is, you know, Martin Luther King said our challenge is to mobilize a new coalition of conscious um, to elect local and national leadership to decide upon policies which affect our communities and protect our freedom and democracy. 
I'm going to uh, kind of talk through these because I know that we have some people who are on the phone and so you can't see what everybody else is seeing. Um, for those of you that have not registered, unfortunately, the last date to register to vote for this 2020 election was October 5th. So that timeline has passed, but you do have an option to check to see if you're registered to vote. Most of us are. If you have a, a state ID, they ask you um, whether it's a driver's license or regular ID, they ask you about that. These are some key dates and timelines that you need to be aware of. Um, October 19th begins our early voting um, October 27th is the last day to request your absentee ballot. So all of us know, as Maggie shared, not only in her prayer, but in her opening comments, that we're in the midst of a pandemic. And so for a lot of people um, who are a part of vulnerable populations or who are just um, not comfortable with going to the ballot, going to the polls on election day, you have the option to request an absentee ballot. And that absentee ballot will be mailed to your house. Um, it's something that you can fill out and either turn back in by hand or you can mail it back um, to the Pulaski County Clerk's Office. October 30th is the last day to transfer registrations, which means that if you're registered to vote, but let's just say that you're registered in a different state or or you're registered, yeah, if you're registered in a different state, that's where you need to make sure that you're registered in the area or you identify what area you actually want to register to. And then um, November 2nd, early voting ends. And then on November 3rd is election day. So a couple of processes in the step, of course, we talked about registering to vote, um, confirm registration by receipt of voter registration card or online with the secretary's website or the website through our Pulaski County uh, clerk, which I just walk through that process with you. Um, vote by absentee ballot or in person. So that's one of the things that I think we've been stressing a lot because a lot of people have questions about what that means. So if we look, we need to register, we need to confirm that we're registered and then we need to vote. So when you get connected to your absentee ballot, um, and this is the registration application, which at this point, that part is passed. I've done this presentation before. So um, this is what uh, a registration application looks like. People can use uh, blue or black ink. They use current actual information, um, write and print to complete the entire form. Um, some of, these are some of the things that were known previously to uh, increase voter suppression um, in the way that if your ballot wasn't, if your registration application wasn't filled out a certain way, then your ballot could potentially be considered null and void. Um, your forms may be completed online, delivered in person, or mailed to the county clerk's office. Um, follow up with county clerk's office to confirm completion, which is something that we worked really hard to do. A voter registration card is mailed to those who registered. Most of us don't have it, but your ID will suffice. Um, and please remember to read <laughs> and remember Section D, because that has to do with um, ID, which Arkansas is a state that requires your ID. For most people, your voter, your voter registration card is important. This is, this is a sample of what it looks like. For, um, for some of us, we have it. But it, in the event that for some of us, there's issues within our um, at our polling location. Um, this card informs you of your voting location. It provides you with the information of the type of ballot you receive and it identifies who you are. Um, it's also something that you can use um, as an identification number that's on there that's connected to your ballot when you actually go um, into the poll. So this year, as we discussed earlier, there are two options to cast your vote. Early voting in person, well, three options to cast your vote. <laughs> early voting in person at any early voting location within the county, October 19th through November 2nd, or on election day at a specific polling location. Um, and that is for those of us, like my husband and I, we tend to uh, go vote on election day at our polling location together. It's a um, it's something that we have done over the past few years, just kind of as a, a tribute to our ancestors and those who have fought so hard to give us that opportunity. Um, a lot of people choose to early vote uh, to avoid lines and identifying their information and voting may be better for them to go to early voting sites. So identify early voting locations within your county. Sites are listed on county clerk's office and the secretary of state's office. Uh, choose a convenient location. Polls are typically open between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday during early voting. 
Voter, voters must bring a state issued identification card and or your voter registration card. If you do not bring an ID, you, you can still vote if you have your uh, voter identification card. So here's something that on election day, if you choose to go in on election day, identify the specific voting location. The location is named on the voter registration card. Um, voters must bring a state issued identification card or voter registration ID card. Ensure you have received the, the correct ballot. So when you get in there, you just wanna make sure you take a quick look and make sure that um, you can actually see that you have the right ballot based on your precinct, uh, based on who's on your ballot and what issues you're voting on. And it should match uh, your ballot number. Employers may allow time to vote, but they aren't required. So if you're in a particular situation where um, you would like to vote and you feel like that may not be an option for you, you may wanna choose early voting because during early voting, you can go anywhere and at any time and vote. So it's not predicated on a particular location or a particular time that that particular polling location is open. A lot of people are encouraged to consider voting early during the early morning hours. Polls may open as early as 6 a.m. and you can identify that through your local election commission or through our Pulaski County Clerk's um, office. The third way that we talked about is the absentee ballot. An application must be completed to request an absentee ballot. An application may be found on the county clerk's secretary of state's website, on the county clerk's and secretary of state's website. Excuse me, applications can also be requested by phone or in person um, from the office of the county clerks. And I know that we see some questions, so once I finish this presentation, for this section, I will give you an opportunity to answer questions before I move on to the issues on the ballot. Applications to request a ballot must be completed um, and returned to the county clerk's office at least seven days prior to the election. Applications to request a ballot must be completed and returned to the county, uh, absentee ballot must be completed and returned at least seven days prior to the uh, election day. It is highly recommended that application requests for all ballots are returned at least 30 days prior. So if you plan on absentee, you can request that now. You can go ahead and, and get that turn in. These are some of the things that we want you to be aware of that any ballot will be rejected if it comes in a bulk mail from someone other than an administrator of a long-time care facility. Um, no voter statement is found in the return envelope or the ballot envelope. The election commission finds that the name, date of birth, address, or signature of the voter statement does not compare to the corresponding information on the absentee ballot application. The absentee ballot was cast by a voter who dies before the polls open on election day if it is postmarked, delivered by a bearer, agent, or administrator, or in this case of active duty armed services voter executed after the date the voter died. If the return envelope indicates the ballot was returned by a bearer, agent, or administrator, but the voter has. Um, not authorized a bearer, agent, administrator, or the voter statement. So that means that if somebody is saying you can, there's an option for you to have someone uh, turn it in on your behalf, but if you don't fill out that information and request that, and then you try to have someone do it, it actually will be um, null and void. Ballots must have the name on a voter statement must be exactly the way the name is stated on the absentee ballot education for application. For example, John A. Doe or one John Doe on the other, for instance. So if you have a middle initial on your application, but you don't have it on the absentee ballot, then it won't uh, go through. Dates of births and address, addresses must, ma must match. So for those of you that filled out an application a long time ago and you register. So when you look up that registration and you want to fill out an absentee ballot, make sure that you have the address that coincides with um, how it's listed in the system. Because if it's two different addresses, if you've moved along the way, maybe you registered to vote uh, years ago and the address that they have on there is different than the address that you have, you want to make sure that that corresponding information is the same. Election officials are not handwriting experts. The signatures must compare if there's a distinct and easily recognizable difference between the signature on the absentee ballot application and voter statement, the ballot will be rejected. 
to eliminate any doubt about the validity of a ballot or it will be set aside for the election commission to review. So we do have a Pulaski County Election Commission that if we do have ballots, that's why that process um, takes so long after people have begun to do that because they don't, uh, some of these things have to be verified because we do have some people that will try to falsify ballots. Um, that hasn't been an issue here in our state, although there's been comments that there's been an issue in our state. There really hasn't. Um, absentee ballots must contain a copy of a photo ID or will be considered provisional ballots. Um, I want to give an opportunity to answer any questions real quick. So let me Maggie, can, do we have any questions in the chat box before I move to this other section? No, but we do have one person on the phone that's not able to. Um... Okay, would you like to, do they have a question? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just ask them to, I, I'm going to ask this person on the phone, ask you to unmute, but if you don't have a question, then don't unmute. Let me find you. Okay, they hung up. Carry on. <laughs> okay. Now, this, uh, we'll put this link in the chat for those of you that are interested. Okay, so this is something that's directly connected to the issue. So we talked about the issues that you see um, on your ballot. And this is a, just the University of Arkansas has a voter guide. Um, kind of shows you what some of those things are. So for issue number one, and, and just to let you know that um, issue six will be on your ballot, but the Supreme Arkansas Supreme Court actually threw issue six out. So even though it's on your ballot, you don't have to be for or against it um, because Arkansas Supreme Court voted that it was not a, a legit was not legitimized to be on the ballot. So sometimes you'll see those things happen and we don't like people to get confused. So know that you'll only be voting on issues number one, two, and three. So issue number one is our 0 0.5 sales tax for state highway and bridges, county roads, city streets, bridges, and other surfaces and transportation. You'll see it as a popular name as the Arkansas Constitution um, allowing one half percent sales and use tax for state highways and bridges. Um, this is the ballot title that you'll see here. Um, and we'll put this link in the... Yeah, Maggie, go ahead and put that link in the chat room so that they can get that link if they want to. Um, but the ballot title, an amendment to the Arkansas Constitution to continue a, le a levy of one half percent sales tax. So this is just a continuation. Um, what's being proposed is that this is pretty much has to do with the sales tax for roads and, and our county roads and our highway systems and our city streets. They're asking us to increase that by 0 0.5, which is used partially to repay highway roads, street bonds, and it's set to expire in June 2023. This will divide the revenue under an existing formula of 70% going to the Arkansas Department of Transportation. 15% uh, will go to county governments and 15% to city governments for roads, bridges, and other issues other than surface transportation. And what that means is that even though you see this larger amount, it's gonna be divided. So if it's going to our State Department of Transportation, then that's probably gonna, or that is going to be our uh, highways and byways, and then our county governments handle for those cities that are under a city jurisdiction, and then only 15% will go to uh, our city governments for roads and bridges within your city. These are some of the things that uh, the supporters say. So this tax will support around 3,600 jobs for each year and provide about 82 billion of economic activity over 10 years. This measure helps to pay for highway and road infrastructure without adding new taxes. 
it is just an extension of an existing tax, so it's not a new tax. So it's something that we're already being taxed for. They're just asking that it be extended. And these are people who are for this particular tax. If the tax extension does not pass, you're going to have county judges and mayors looking at their budget sheets thinking, I've just lost 30% of my road money. Do I take it from other things or do I let my roads further deter deteriorate? And those are tough questions that our city and local governments have to deal with if it's not passed. Um, there's a significant need for funding for highways and roads and for those of us that drive our highways and byways, we understand that. To ensure public safety, repair or replace dangerous bridges and to ensure access to reliable roads. Uh, this money could improve close to all of the roads that Arkansas uses most. Um, funds could go towards improving almost all 7,300 7, out of the 7,900 miles of our roads. That's about 90% of Arkansas traffic. Um, some of the people who funding for our highways and roads is a growing problem because most of that funding comes from fuel taxes, which is whittled away by increasing construction costs, increasing fuel efficiency, and decreased fuel consumption. And alternative funding sources are necessary. Some of the opponents, um, the people who are not for this bill, or this issue says that RDOT cannot take care of its existing roads because it has too many to oversee. If the highway department were to receive 300 million, it would ask for 300 million more. And if it gets that, it would need 300 million more. The amount of money it, funding it receives is never enough. Um, a huge portion of the tax revenue will go to the 30 crossing project in Little Rock, an unnecessary um, issue. <laughs> that will benefit only a tiny percentage of Arkansans. RDOT is currently being sued in the state and federal courts for violating environmental and planning regulations on this project, as well as using four lane highways, tax revenue for expanding these freeways to six to eight lane byways. Many Arkansans and lawmakers have pledged not to increase taxes to Arkansans. And if this increase uh, happens, it would violate um, that promise. It is. It is a new tax, so some opponents feel like it is a new tax. If, it got, if you got a 10-year sentence in jail, then the judge extended it, that would be an additional sentence. <laughs> more and more states have multi-model uh, transportation programs that fund public transportation. To date, um, RDOT has spent virtually no dollars on public transportation. Um, it, is small, it is a small benefit to Arkansas who want mobility but cannot drive. So again, that Department of Transportation amount is 15% counties, 15% to cities. Um, after de deducting the 3% for administrative expenses, the proposed sales tax is expected to generate approximately $293.7 million in annual revenue. Of that, $205.6 million will be allocated to state highway transportation to that fund of 44 million to cities and 44 million to counties. There's a lot more information about this particular um, ballot issue for those of you that want to kind of do an in-depth look at why you would choose to vote for or against it. Um, so here's some information for those of you that can see, I don't want to go too much in detail, but it kind of shows you some of that um, information. And then you can find this information on proposed issue number one um, on this link that we'll send you that the U of A has done. Um, issue number two is general changing general assembly term limits and allowing re-election upon a break in service. Um, a constitutional amendment to be known as Arkansas term limits amended amendment and amending the term limits applicable to our general assembly. So your state uh, senators and your state representatives is what is being proposed with this amendment. This amendment asks Arkansas voters to change the term limits of the General Assembly described in Amendment 73 of our Arkansas Constitution. If approved, the voters, this amendment will eliminate lifetime term limits but require breaks in service for future state senators and representatives. Specifically, this amendment will remove lifetime term limits for state legislators, prohibit future legislators from serving more than 12 years in a row, Legislators who serve full 12 year consecutively will be allowed to hold office again once four years have passed since their last term expired. Include two year Senate terms resulting from opponent appointments apportionment after a census is calculated the years of consecutive service.
service for legislators elected after January 121. Currently, this two year partial term does not count towards term limits. And this one would also allow for current legislators and any legislators elected this November to serve under the current term limit amendment, which allows them to serve 16 years consecutively um, of non or non consecutively. They will be eligible to hold office in the future once four years have passed from their last term expiring. Now, some of some supporters say people always uh, say they want to run government like a business. I'm not aware of any business that fires their board of directors or their management team every six years, eight or 10 years. This is what people who are for this amendment says. The amendment gives someone time to become experienced and to become effective while still accomplishing the goal of keeping term limits short enough that they will get new blood. Um, so this pretty much has to do with if you want people to serve for longer periods of time without any breaks in service. What opponents say that the term limit amendment is actually a term extender because it allows current legislators after serving the currently allowable 16 years to sit out four years and run to serve 12 more years. The amendment removes the current lifetime limit, allowing politicians to return to office just after four years out. Um, some people prefer that just like issues from the voters are opposed to legislators trying to do it at this point. It has a lot to do with how your legislators are voting. Um, it has to do a lot with um, lobbyists and who has dark money in their pockets and who don't. So I, it's really, I encourage you to read this and kind of make your decision. I'm trying to give this from a nonpartisan perspective, meaning I'm not pushing it one way or the other, but it's definitely for you all to determine as citizens, how do you want your representatives to serve? Do you want them to serve longer times? Um, and then here, it shows you kind of a timeline of how these term limits have been approved or passed in the past. So you can kind of see where did Arkansas stand in the past on these type of issues. And then it kind of gives you some more information. For those of you that are on the phone and cannot see this, um, I've given my information and I'm more than happy to get it to you um, if it's something that you want to look at before determining making your decision. With that, um, it prohibits legislators pretty much from serving more than 12 years in a row. Um, and those who serve 12 years consecutively will hold office again, so they have to have a break in service before they run again. Um, that gives an opportunity for maybe new blood to get in there or give them an opportunity to reconnect with their uh, voters. These are some of the things that kind of serve um, as a hindrance or as a plus for some, depending on where you stand. The final issue on our ballot is issue number three, um, changing Arkansas citizen initiative process, votes required for legislative proposals and publication requirements. All of these issues are important. This is a, one of the issues that is particular to me, just because if you understand government and legislation, um, it, it, it really affects how things will move forward. An amendment to the Arkansas Constitution, and when our Constitution is amendment, that's, that's harder to do. To amend the process for the submission, challenge, and approval of proposed initiated acts, constitutional amendments, and referenda. So as we come upon a time where our nation seems to be divided, and even our state um, along party lines, along racial lines, um, there are all of these different ballot initiatives that people feel like they want to be on the ballot and there's requirements for that. Like we saw with the medical marijuana when that came about, what was required for them to get that on the ballot. Um, for those of us that are coming up on um, kind of seeing what's happening with the Black Lives Matter initiative, some of those things that we wanna see on the ballot um, to kind of change how we do things with gerrymandering, just various ways, this law kind of speaks to that. So voters are being asked to approve changes to Arkansas citizen initiative processes. So this is people who want things to be added to our ballots, irrespective of um, how our legislators or our elected officials feel. Specifically, this amendment would change Article 5, Section 1 of our Arkansas Constitution, known as Initiatives and Referendums. Um, the, changes, uh, the change the date when voter signatures are due for statewide ballot measures proposed by the public. Instead, four months ahead of the general election, the due date will be set as January 15th of the election year. 
increase the number of counties where voter signatures must be collected for statewide ballot measures and referendums proposed by the public from 15 counties to 45 counties. It would establish 15 of the election year, establish April 15th of the election year as the deadline for filing lawsuits. So anybody that wants to challenge statewide ballot measures proposed by the public would have to do that by um, April 15th. It eliminates the ability of statewide ballot issue groups to collect and submit additional uh, signatures from voters to put a proposed constitutional amendment um, by state law or referendum on the ballot. This is a first round of signatures submitted to the Secretary of State that does not meet the threshold. This is often called a cure period. This will also eliminate the cure period for local ballot measures on a city or countywide ballot if the first round of signatures submitted to the city or county clerk does not meet the threshold. This, is, uh, this will also eliminate a section requiring that persons challenging the validity of a ballot issue petition in the court has the burden to prove the petition is invalid. The impact of this change, I'm sorry, the impact of this change is um, a burden on the petition that makes it invalid and it's not clear. It adds a, sen a sentence to the constitution that extends a deadline that falls on weekends, holidays to the next day that isn't Saturday, Sunday, or a legal holiday. And then here you have what some of the people who are supporters say, um, what some of the people who are not for this say. Um, and then we do have issue number four for some. Well, this, is, this one was removed from the ballot as well. So let me stop sharing my screen so that <laughs> so that we can get to um, answering any of your questions about anything uh, that I've said thus far. Um, do we have any questions in our box? Because we do have someone from the county clerk's office who's going to visit with us today. So I don't see any questions in the chat right now, but um, if does anyone have a question, you can either raise your hand. Um, it should be a little button that allows you to raise your hand. We'll give just a few seconds and see. Okay. I don't think there are any questions right now. Okay. So, Again, we're gonna put this information, which you see it in the chat, my information and contact information relative to anything that I spoke about today. Um, and then also um, we have uh, the links to the ballot initiatives and issues. And again, if you're on the phone and you're listening in, um, you can always contact me at vice chair at ArcDems. And then you, if you're a member of McAllen Church of Christ, you can always contact our uh, Miss Durrell, Miss Julia Durrell, and get my information. I'm more than happy to give that to you to, to help you all figure out this process. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Maggie to, well, actually, no, it's my turn. We're going to introduce a special guest that we have for you today. <laughs> Let me make sure that I'm not, no, Maggie, it's you. Helpful resources. So I did just want to say one thing. Well, first of all, Nicole, that was very informative because uh, I was not aware of any of the issues. So <laughs> now I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, read and see how I need to vote uh, when I go vote. So also for my Little Rock residents, I want us to remember that you are also going to be voting on a uh, school board. So this is the first time I think in about six years that you're going to be able to uh, vote for your school, a Little Rock School Board officials because they have been under state control for the past six years. So this is a really big election, uh, in my opinion, because I'm an employee with Little Rock School District and it is a big deal. So, um, oh, let me put the spotlight on me. So it is really a big deal. So I'm going to put a link in uh, the chat and it's just a, um, a article that just kind of gives you some information about the people that are running for um, 
that are running for school board, I believe there are 19 people and it just kind of gives you some background and information on them so that when you, if you are a Little Rock resident and when you go to the polls, you'll be educated about who to vote for. So, um, so that was all my little blurb that I wanted to say. So now I am going to, going to put the spotlight back on Nicole and she's going to introduce our special guest, Ms. Deborah Mitchell. Okay, I'm so excited to uh, introduce Ms. Deborah Mitchell because she has been just an inspiration to me. Um, she's been an awesome leader in our community, uh, not only just within the Pulaski County Clerk's Office, but just across the state. She's done some great things. And for me not being a native of Arkansas and kind of making Arkansas my home, she kind of serves as my uh, go-to for somebody who has become an Arkansan um, and done great things for the state, irregardless of not being born here. So Deborah Mitchell is Assistant Chief Deputy for Terry Hollingsworth with the Pulaski County Clerk Circuit and County Clerk. A graduate of the University of Oklahoma, she is a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, uh, St. Augustine's Catholic Church, and a lifetime associate of Jack and Jill of America. She is a founding board member of the New Leaders Council, a nonprofit leadership development organization that equips millennials with the skills to run for office, run a nonprofit, or start a business. She was born and raised in New York City. She has been a resident of North Little Rock for over 30 years. She and her husband, Dennis, have two children and one adorable grandson that I love to see uh, on social media. So <laughs> without further ado, I'll inter we'll turn the floor over to Ms. Deborah Mitchell. Maggie, mm. give me Thank you, thank you. I, I, you guys had a lot of information today. Um, I just wanna thank you, Nicole and Maggie for so uh, graciously changing my name <laughs> on, the, uh, on the monitor here. Um, and I'm not gonna be long. All I was tasked with to do today is to uh, empower people to vote. You got a lot of information. I know it can be very overwhelming to keep up with everything that needs to go on. And especially when it comes to the ballot issues, uh, we had six, then it went to four, then it went to three. And, uh, and you go into the polls and you're probably gonna see four. <laughs> and you're gonna go, what am I supposed to do here? But um, before you walk into the polls, it's great to get that information and understand the value of voting. So I think everybody on here really understands it, um, the importance of voting, it's our civic duty and it's our right to vote. But interesting enough, 2020 um, has been um, one of those years that we don't want it to come back again. But what the positive things that have occurred in 2020 is this movement to vote, this, this, this whole movement with young people, with um, uh, people who have never voted before, for people who are returning citizens, which some people like to refer to them as ex-felons, um, uh, but they're really returning citizens. They see that they're hearing the call to um, get their papers in order and restore their right to vote. We see young people who are just turning 18 realizing that they need to go vote. And it's a movement that we want to continue on right up to the election. Um, as in the seat that I sit, sit, sit in, uh, in the chair that I sit in, I see it every day where people who are really concerned about making sure that their vote is counted. Uh, we started this journey um, in, the, in the clerk's office uh, back uh, last year before COVID hit by going to all uh, schools, all high schools and registering um, as many seniors or anyone, any high school student that was gonna be 18 by November 3rd. Um, we partnered with, non, uh, with nonpartisan groups and we went to as many high schools as we could until COVID came and stopped us. Matter of fact, we were on our way um, in a couple of days, um, we were gonna be hitting Central again, Central High School, and COVID came and shut us down. So we stopped, but that movement had continued on even after COVID, uh, after the protests, people felt more engaged. Because why we vote? Because we vote because it's, an, it's our voice. Uh, voting is very personal. When we vote, we vote for candidates who have similar values. We may not agree 100% with them, but they really align to what's important to you. We vote because we wanna support key issues that matter to you, your family, and your community. 
But when we vote, we're not just voting on what's on top of the ticket. We vote for us for um, candidates on the state level. And for this this uh, election, you'll be voting on county and uh, city. And uh, as Maggie had shared about uh, city directors and school board members, and that's across all three uh, school board uh, school districts. There are going to be candidates on there for um, Jacksonville, North Little Rock. Little Rock uh, school districts, and also judges. Uh, it's important that um, sometimes we overlook the importance of, uh, we so engrossed into the legislative aspect, and the, um, but we also need to be looking at the judicial. What are those, those judges, what are they gonna care about? Because eventually one day or another, you may come and sit in that judge's court and you want someone who is going to be fair for a fair as well as uh, impartial. So all elections matter uh, and every votes matter. Uh, also in 2020, you may have remembered that we had an election for um, a special election for state representative 34. Um, and that decision during the special election was decided by one vote. If there's never a time we talk about one vote, <laughs> one voice, and how every vote, vote matters. It was that election for um, State Representative 34. And interesting enough, it wasn't at election night, it was a tie, but it, uh, 10 days later, uh, the law allows that our overseas voter, voters um, get their ballots in in time. And it was that one vote from an overseas candidate, I mean, overseas voter that decided that election. So we learn now that every vote matters and um, we want people to continue on it. You see it on social media. There's not a platform. I can't get on any type of uh, platform without someone pop, a pop up telling me about the importance of voting. And now we're seeing it across, even when our professional support, our sporting uh, leagues like the NBA, uh, they're hearing the call to, for people to vote. So um, it's now time to get your, get your circle of friends. You're, in, you're an influencer whether you know it or not, <laughs> and uh, get people to the polls. Don't just worry about just yourself and maybe your family, but worry about everybody else, especially if it's those who are deciding to vote by absentee. Um, I can't tell you how many times we get calls. Our, our phones ring off the hook from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday with people asking questions about, especially about absentee. If you're on here and you have any questions about absentee, please, this is a great time. I just want to remind people there are three things that you need to have in your absentee packet when you mail it back to the clerk's office. One, you need to have your ballot in that sealed only envelope and it says ballot only. Two, you need to fill out that voter statement. Uh, to my eyes, it's a red sheet. To everyone else, it may be a reddish sheet, a pink sheet, a peach sheet, whatever. That voter statement <laughs> needs to be completed. Um, box, they're in, they're in different boxes. So we wanna make sure that people sign that document, it's box six. And also for your own protection, go ahead and sign um, box five. And then the third thing is your photo ID. So those are the three things that need to get into that return envelope and seal it. Um, you may get it, you may understand it, but maybe someone else doesn't. Um, maybe your neighbor, maybe a church member who decided to vote by absentee to now and finds it somewhat challenging and difficult. Go in and ask them, call them up and ask them, have you filled out your absentee? Do you need some assistance and make sure it's done? And then send it off. You can mail it in, it takes three first class stamps. You can um, bring it into the courthouse. Uh, even though it's closed, we have two tents set up on Second Street where you can just walk right on up and return your ballot. And then the clerk will announce, she has a big announcement starting next week um, it'll be next week and it'll come during early voting. So we want people to um, listen out for that. And as she's got an exciting announcement on how people can also return their um, ballots. And early voting, it's time. If you're not, if it is time to get to, to, get to the ballot, <laughs> get to the voting precinct. Uh, and voting will begin at eight o'clock. Previous elections, it was 10, started at 10 at early voting sites. They moved it up to the, to the maximum amount allowable by law. 
So we are, we're doing all that we can to ensure that people have um, the ability to vote. And um, that's basically about it. And I hope everyone here has registered. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, pop them in the chat and I can stay on and answer them because you're probably gonna call us or you have called us. <laughs> Hopefully we <laughs> answered it. So that's about it for me, uh, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. We're going to, I'm going to turn it back over to Matt, Maggie. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. That was very informative. And, you know, I thought about when you said that you all were going to the high schools. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, when I was in high school, the big election was Obama. And um, who was his running mate at the time, though? He's had two. Who? Oh, you mean Obama? It's always been uh, Joe Biden. It's always been Joe Biden. Now, I'm talking about uh, who was running against him. Oh, so you're talking about uh, John McCain or and Romney. Sarah Palin in 2008. And then in 12, it was Mitt Romney. Romney. Okay. So it was, it was McCain that year, but the big yeah. thing was vote or die. And that's how I feel about this election. It's vote <laughs> or die. And a lot of people don't realize that there are other people on the ballot other right. than Trump and Biden. So that's one reason we wanted to have this. Uh, let me put me back on the spotlight. That's one reason why we wanted to have this information session is because there are more people than mm -hmm. those two and that are, also just imperative to your life as well that can right. make decisions that affect you as well so thank you for that thank you nicole thank you miss mitchell and so now we are i'm gonna just scan and see if there are any questions in the chat again before we close i don't see any so thank you all for joining us um today like i said this information will be re is being recorded and it will be available on our mcalman church of christ youtube channel and so when it is posted, go ahead and share and watch again. And um, Nicole was um, telling me that she didn't, she didn't want to overload us with information, but I told her that I think that that's kind of a good thing, with, especially with the issues, because it's going to force you to go and read up on the issues and see how, you know, mm -hmm. how you need to vote. So um, just make sure that you do something, you know, that you do your research. And it, like we said, this was a nonpartisan um, information session. So we're empowering you to make your decision yourself because we know that you are capable of it. So, um, so for now, we are going to end. Like I said, thank you for coming and share, share, share. Once this post, please share because we want to get the word out. And like I said, literally vote or die. Literally vote, <laughs> vote or die. So um, with that being said, I'm going to unmute brother Harris or ask him to unmute and he is going to close us out in prayer and I'm going to put you on the spotlight brother <clears throat> Harris spotlight yeah let me first of all express thanks to the team that put on this important presentation of information concerning the upcoming election it's important that we understand what the issues are, that we're empowered to take advantage of them, give an access to the system, and then follow through with voting and then being a good citizen in every way. And so thank all the presenters for today's session. And I'm hoping that this will not be the last thing that we do, not only regarding elections, but also regarding the life of people in general. Let's pray together. Precious Holy Father, we come to you with gratitude and thanksgiving for the privileges that you have granted us and for the opportunities you've given us both to live and to be able to have an impact on the lives of others. May the session that we had a chance to witness today open up eyes concerning the issues that are before us and the opportunities that we have to access information that will empower us to make votes according to our consciences and our desires. We pray, kind Father, for the outcome of the election, that your will will prevail in the hearts of men and that we will seek to do those things that bring glory and honor to your holy name. Thank you for MacAlma Ben in a position to have people capable of putting on such an event as this and the resources to bring it about. We ask now, Father, that you'll go with all of those who have participated today, 
all of those that have heard and received the information and that will be impacted by it. Bless us as a people, bless us as a state, bless us as a nation. Help us to find in the depth of our souls the values that matter the most, the needs that are present before us the most, and the opportunities that will give us the, the ability to do the most good for the most people, that you might receive the praise from all of us to know that you're God and that you see what we're doing and that you're able to bring to pass the desires of our hearts. We give you thanks in the holy name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen.